He's an inventor, a cameraman, and a self-professed movie junkie. With credits on some of Hollywood's biggest blockbusters, you might expect to find him working in a high-tech lab. But think again. This country barn is where Garrett Brown's imagination becomes reality. This place is, is good for me because of the way that I go about this job, which is I'm not one of these sort of eureka, leap out of the bath kind of guys who you know, have, have the whole thing in my head. Although I did one of those, very, was very almost close to that, and then, in fact, with Skycam. Inventing is in his blood. When you see this, this is something else. His grandfather invented farm equipment. His father, bookbinding glue. Uh, first experiment, or actually the second experiment, to see if the Skycam would work. But it's the moving image that took hold of Garrett, or more appropriately, Garrett took hold of it. Well, the Skycam can fly. It's not just that it will reproduce what a person could see running or moving at high speed. It can reproduce what flight could see, what a flying creature, a bird, or one of these comic book characters that can also fly, what they can see. Here's the uh, 1983 Skycam camera itself. The latest, smallest 35 mil camera ever. The idea for Skycam was conceived during a conversation with actor Merlin Olson on the set of Little House on the Prairie. It was one particular movie that sparked the inventor's imagination. I had just seen Chariots of Fire, and it was a fabulous shot pursuing the runners from just, a, you know, maybe 12, 15 feet in the air. And Merlin said, well, that would be, that would, I think that would be really good. That would be really great. I recently found the original sketch, which is surprisingly close to the mark. Garrett doesn't label himself a scientist or a mathematician, but you'd never know it. The original drawing for his Skycam prototype looks like something from Leonardo da Vinci's sketchbook. And here's how the flying Skycam works. It's held aloft by four almost invisible lines strung from the corners of a movie set and clipped to the camera at its center of balance. Each of the four lines are fed by a computer-controlled reel. These reels hold hundreds of feet of high-tech, ultra-thin Kevlar line. Picture all four reels winding up and the camera rises. If two reels let out and two take up, the camera moves sideways. The challenge for Garrett in building the first Skycam was finding the quiet and efficient motors needed to power its reels. The motors that we ended up using were B1 bomber turret motors, which are the only motors available in the package that we needed that could be controlled in that way, that were strong enough and small enough and so on. Those motors, I recall, were $16,000 a piece in 1983 dollars, which is a shock. It was all a shock to my system. but. It was so seductive, the idea of being able to do this, that we just kept at it. Our original idea was to make five of them, and uh, we ended up with one that worked brilliantly, and it had a film camera on it and a video camera. And of course, we immediately started shooting movies with it, as well as sporting events. And the film one shot Verdi. Uh, then we shot The Boy Who Could Fly, with some amazing stuff. Something fascinating happens when you move the camera because it stresses the continuity of observation. So there's the beginning of a very special narrative in movement, but movement always presents problems. Will the camera shake? Since the medium cries out for movement, people have always been trying to move further. I'm a moving camera junkie, there, if there ever was one. And it tells you things about this movie world when you start to move that you don't know otherwise but I like it to move smoothly. Step up to the old stand and pluck up the camera. A decade before Skycam's inception, Garrett Brown was on a mission to come up with a camera that would move and flow and capture images as smoothly as the human eye. I wanted the Steadicam. I really, really wanted one. I used to shoot Sesame Street films and I had an enormous 600 pound dolly because that's how you had to move a camera. And to move my stupid little Bolex, 10 feet, I had to put it on my ancient 600-pound dolly and lay my rails and push this damn thing along, you know. Running, 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 and the camera just sits there. There had to be some way to isolate, you know, the ever-moving human from the camera that you wanted to look smooth. And that I just started chasing it. Are you okay? Hugo, you all right? All right. Hugo, Hugo over here. This is 
the very first study cam harness or vest and arm that I made in 1973. And of course the camera, which goes on the arm, on its little gimbal ring, which isolates it. When I was out shooting with these prototypes, I looked like a man having eye surgery who had lost his way, you know. This end goes in the camera and the image falls there. This end goes on the hapless cameraman's head on this harness, right? And is held so you're looking through one eye at the actual shot from your camera. Now, you don't look too cool, I admit, you know. What happened next changed movie making forever. When I had chased my then girlfriend, now wife, down the steps of the Philly Art Museum to make a demo, and of course, didn't I chase Stallone up those same steps, you know, because the director had seen my demo and said, where are those steps and how did you do that? In 1978, the Steadicam received Hollywood's highest honors. Uh, there's a unique new camera stabilizing system called Steadicam. And this is what, what it looks like. What Getting the Oscar for Steadicam was terrific, of course, because at a stroke, the whole world knows that this has been done and that you're the one that did it. And if they're inclined to, then they'll find their way to your doorstep and, and uh, make use of it. ...award for the invention and development of Steadicam. The award goes to Garrett Brown. So, it, of course, it was wonderful for business. As the industry changes, Garrett's inventions are adapting. This is my baby. So. I love camcorders. Miniature cameras mean, well, miniature steady cameras. Steady cam for camcorders. We did one called the Steadicam Junior or JR. That was great. But I always wanted an, an instrument, a real, a real jewel-like instrument. And this is the Steadicam Merlin, so-called. And the Merlin is a stabilizer for camcorders from half pound to five pounds. Now you've got a study cam that, you know, if you're careful, works as well as the big one. And it lets you be your own five-man camera crew with, with camcorders. This modern renaissance man who never stops may well transform camera operators into camera choreographers. So it's a, you know, essentially a hands-free operation. You are operating steady cam. you have some speed. This hands-free segue would be great for steady cam because, of course, we have both hands tied up with operating and, and so on. Do I look terrified or not? No. I'm cool. You can move very slow. I'll leave the filming to my students from now on and just concentrate on teaching and thinking about the gear. Well, gotta go now. I, th I just ride this home. I just, you know, I take it home. I go everywhere. So there's still things to be dreamed up and improved on, and that's by virtue of wishing for things that didn't exist.